first, if you're looking for a gripping real life story to sink your teeth into, I think we've got just the thing for and you. And how. This is out on Disney Plus today. Torn is the name of it. it tells the incredible story of loss, family trauma, unexpected romance uh, and grief. Take a look. Oh, amazing. We're joined now by son Max, mum Jennifer and stepdad Conrad. Good morning, morning to all to of you. All. Now, we know it's very early in the morning. We do appreciate you doing this yeah. interview. We say so good morning, we mean good so morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to start off with you, Max, because you made this documentary. And at the time when your dad died, you were only 10 years old. So take us back to that time. What, firstly, do you remember of your dad as a climber? Because he was actually quite a famous climber at the time, wasn't he? And tell us a little bit about your dad. Yeah, he, um, I mean, and, and my stepdad, Conrad, and my mom can probably speak more to this, but when, when I was born, you know, he was really coming up in his career and, you know, through my life up into the point where he passed away, and he really became one of the most um, world-renowned mountaineers in the high, um, high mountains of the world. Um, scaling these huge peaks that were in super remote, hard to get to places. And uh, he became became world famous for this. He was on talk radio shows in countries all over the world, and all over the U.S. And uh, you know, he he became much more than just a climber. You know, he was this adventurer, celebrity character. And um, you know, to me, he was still just my dad. And so um, at this at this point in my life, where where he left for this final trip, you know, I was ten years old. And um, the day he was killed was five days before my 11th birthday. So oh. it was this pivotal point in my life uh, where I was right on the cusp of becoming a man and trying to, you know, kind of reach into that um, life of my own a little bit. And, and you know, I was really becoming friends with him for the first time. And so to lose him at that point, I think really uh, you know, sent me on a path that, that, has led me to this place, yeah. I think, in a lot of ways, because uh, uh, a lot of the things that I experienced at that moment in my life um, were really sealed in, until 2016 when we went back and started this film in Tibet. Um, well, let's pick up with Jennifer and Conrad. Um, I guess, Jennifer, when Alex went off on these, uh, on these expeditions, were you, by this time, were you kind of prepared for it? I mean, he was a very experienced climber, as a 40th American to summit Everest, or did you always prepare for the worst? And Conrad, you were very often with him, so you climb with him a lot as well. Um, yeah, so Alex and I were together for seven years before we had Max, he was our firstborn. And um, during that time, you know, his career was escalating and um, gosh, uh, he had been on some pretty extensive expeditions uh, by the time the kids were born. Um, he did go and summit Everest when Max was two, but he had already uh, been on K2, and that was a really long trip, like three months. And so I was kind of getting used to his expeditioning and was pretty independent and um, felt pretty confident. And yes, I knew of the dangers because I had climbed with Alex um, for the first, um, you know, years of our marriage mm -hmm. before we had kids. And, and so I, I, I thought I knew the dangers. Um, you know, I never expected him to perish. And that was certainly a surprise and a shock. Yeah. And, and Conrad, you were... Alex's best friend. You were with him on that fateful day, the 5th of October, 1999. Take us back to that time and tell us exactly what happened and how it came that he died and you survived. How, what happened? We were at our advanced camp underneath the uh, south face of Shishapangma, which is the world's 14th tallest peak. And on a... Uh, Acclimatization day, um, the day that we spend at altitude to get used to being there, we traverse underneath a, a slope that uh, had a pretty large avalanche, ice avalanche that was triggered uh, well above us. And we ran in different directions. And um, it was uh, as if a, a giant snow cloud with wind 
enveloped us and then there was still in calmness thereafter and David and Alex had disappeared. That's so frightening. And you suffered with something that's called survivor's guilt, didn't you? Yeah, for those that have been in uh, something like this and it's um, documented in people that are in, in military type, um, someone that has gone through a traumatic experience but then survives, there's a questioning. And um, it's one thing when it's in military or a firefighter or, or a police person, something like that. But when we question what we do on our own spare time, our recreation, what we do that defines us and it takes life, then it um, it has a, a, a deeper question to us and something that we work through as a family. Yeah. So, <laughs> And you have Love worked Jen. through it. You definitely have. Jennifer, when you got that call, I don't know how you got the call. Was it Conrad who came to you and called you and told you what happened? Uh, Conrad was there and it was one of the other teammates, um, Andrew, who made the first call. Um, and it was pretty shocking and and I I actually asked to talk to Conrad you know and I was like questioning did you look for him enough has you know he could be in a crevasse you know it was like you don't want to believe it's true and but um I also knew of other people who had died in avalanches so I was picturing what could have happened um and with any kind of trauma like that, when there's sudden death, and he was a young person, he was 40 years old, and you know, we were young, we were young, we had yeah. um, this young family. And so, yeah, it was a traumatic event. And, um, and certainly, I think for both Conrad and I, you know, we had a, a form of PTSD from the shock of yeah. that loss. And um, at the time, you know, that wasn't really a term that was used that much, but now it's come more into uh, the lexicon of use and people are recognizing it. And, and certainly, you know, we fell in love with each other um, because we were both um, in deep grief. And um, I think that, Conrad as cl his close climbing partner was, you know, about the closest person to Alex other than myself. Um, and to go back to, to Max, Max, um, to sort of, to, to fast forward, I guess, to, to 2016, when Alex's body, your, you know, your father's body was found. Firstly, when did you decide to, 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 I mean, you're a photographer and filmmaker, when did you decide to make a film about this discovery and what your family had been through? And, and certainly, um, certainly, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it closure, but because you never close a grief, can you? But but the, I just I work through the process, I suppose. Yeah, in in the decision to go back to Tibet when when Alex's remains and, and the remains of his partner David, who were kid, was killed as well, were found. Um, you know, as a family, we made this decision to go back and put them to rest, and in that moment. You know, I recognized that you know, if I was ever going to tell Alex's story and the story of his life and death, you know, this would be a part of that. And, you know, at the time, I didn't really know what it would become. I certainly didn't know that I would set out to make a feature documentary film about it. But I knew that this was going to be a potent moment in my experience and in my relationship to Alex. Uh, losing him at 10 years old and, and never really having this physical closure of recognizing his death, really, because I, at the time, as a kid, you know, I, I held on to this idea. You know, my mom kind of placed it in my mind, I think, um, in the following days and weeks after the incident that he might still be alive. And I think I held on to that longer. Um, and... So coming back to this trauma that I had kind of sealed away and left behind as a 10 year old now, you know, in my late twenties and as a storyteller, you know, I recognized in storytelling this, this kind of magic that you can explore things uh, via a story that you might not otherwise and turning that on myself in this moment, uh, 
really shifted my own perspective on my own trauma and the experience that our whole family had held and still held from Alex's death in different ways. It sounds phenomenal, guys. It, Torn is in the cinemas now. It's also available on Disney+. Plus. Um, thank you so much thank for joining so us much. and telling it. I don't know what you're going to do now. You're either going to go back to bed or power on through, but, uh, you know, best of luck for the day ahead. Get the coffee on. <laughs> Have some nice breakfast. No worries. Thank you for Let having us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.